ever had that experience where someone you know comes up to you with something old or a photo of something old and asks you to identify it because they're younger than you and they don't have a clue what it is. Or perhaps you're having a conversation with someone you forgot is much younger than you and you mention something from your youth that you're fond of only to discover that they're meeting your enthusiasm with blank stares. Mini discs, anyone? How about parallel printer cables? Scuzzy rotary phones. Yeah, I feel old. Although that might be something to do with the fact that my teenagers have now both left home and are doing their own things in the world. Getting the pangs of nostalgia for obsolete technology that's a couple of decades old is one thing, but getting blank stares from people when talking about more contemporary technology? That is an uncomfortable feeling. Yet, if you're in the electric vehicle world, you may soon be about to get that feeling as one of the earliest electric vehicle rapid charging standards is unceremoniously being dumped by charging station manufacturers and charging networks around the world as another rival charging standard takes precedence. It's like Betamax versus VHS all over again. At least, it is everywhere except Japan. That's right, I'm talking about Chidemo, the huge multi-pin charging connector that's been with us for more than a decade. For many years, it was the most commonly found DC quick charging standard at public charging stations around the world. It was the default charging standard used by Nissan for its LEAF and ENV200 electric vehicles. It was found on the Mitsubishi Imiev and Outlander plug-in hybrid. It was found on the Peugeot Ion and Citroen C0, which, to be fair, were just rebadged Mitsubishi Imiev's. Kia used it for its first generation Kia Soul EV. And even Tesla produced and sold an adapter to allow Tesla owners to charge their cars with Chidemo stations when a Tesla supercharger wasn't nearby. And that's before you even look at the massive number of lesser known EVs that you may have not even known about because they weren't sold in your country, but certainly had Chidemo connectivity. Not to mention the aftermarket upgrades that gave cars like the second generation Toyota RAV4 EV, Mercedes-Benz B-Class ED, and original Tesla Roadster, Chidemo rapid charging capabilities. Now, as the CCS charge standard has assumed dominance, a standard which, amusingly, has two different versions depending on which slow-speed charging connector standard is preferred in your home country, but is supported by big auto in North America and Europe, Chidemo has disappeared from the majority of electric vehicles made and sold outside of Japan. It's, it's been coming for a while. I mean, I've been witnessing the decline in Chidemo as a charging network for five years. But just as automakers are dropping it as a charging standard, charging networks, offer through legal requirements to continue to support the standard, have continued to offer at least one dual head CCS and Chidemo charging station at its more popular charging locations. But last month, Electrify America, one of, if not the, largest electric vehicle charging network in North America, announced it would no longer be installing Chidemo-compatible charging hardware at its new sites. And the word on the street is that many charging providers that have Chidemo hardware out in the wild have been neglecting the standard, causing reliability problems and headaches for anyone who owns a Chidemu compatible car. So today we're going to look at the history of the charging standard, examine why it's falling out of fashion, what you can do as a Chidemu car owner, and ask if there's any point buying a Chidemu compatible car today. Officially the name Chidemu is an abbreviation of the phrase charge to move, effectively a reference to the fact that the standard is capable of charging your car quickly and allowing you to get back on the road with minimal fuss. But it's also a derivation of a Japanese phrase that could be interpreted as, how about a cup of tea? Something that, if you were going to be taking part in one of the shorter, less formal Japanese tea ceremonies, would take about 30 minutes. Or about the same time it takes to quick charge an early Chidemo car, like a Nissan Leaf or Mitsubishi Imiev, to 80% full. The standard was originally designed through a partnership between the Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO for short, Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Fuji Heavy Industries. The latter is now known as the Subaru Corporation. 
The original design standard for what we know as Chidemo was first established in 2005, but it would be four more years before the first Chidemo charging station was built in Japan. That coincided with the launch of the Mitsubishi Aimiev. And yes, that's right. While many of us in the West think of the Nissan Leaf as the first mass-produced rapid charging car that you could buy, Mitsubishi actually beat Nissan to the punch by more than a year. But it wasn't the first DC quick charging standard. We've seen them throughout history. The original RAV4 EV, for example, at least the very early 1999 to 2001 era models that were sold or leased in Japan, featured a physical rapid charge connector, which was to all intents and purposes, the precursor to the modern Chidemo inlet. It too was developed with involvement from TEPCO, but used a slightly different pinout design. The last I knew, there were still three remaining rapid charging stations in Osaka that were compatible with a handful of super rare early RAV4 EVs that were still driving around a decade ago. These days, I'm guessing most of them have long since vanished. And no, it wasn't available in the US market RAV4 EV. And I know, because I used to own one. Anyway, back to Tademo. The standard uses a pretty massive connector that has two large power pins for transferring high current DC power, as well as a series of smaller low voltage connectors. These are used to communicate between the car and the charging station using the CAN bus protocol that's found in pretty much every modern vehicle, electric or otherwise, today. The first iteration of Chidemo was capable of providing up to 62.5 kilowatts of DC quick charging power, but over the last decade that has increased to 200 kilowatts using the same physical connector. There is an even higher power version on the way that uses a new physical connector and can transfer as much as 400 kilowatts of instantaneous power, but that's not in the wild yet, and I'll come back to that later in the video. Unlike, for example, Tesla's own supercharger connector, Chidemo is only used to provide high voltage DC fast charging power, meaning that any car that offers it has two charging inlets, a lower voltage charge inlet that you use at home or with a granny lead, or the one that you use at a DC quick charging station. Side note, because a couple of people asked a few weeks ago, a granny lead is the colloquial name for that portable charge cable that often comes with your new car, because if you've got a charging station at home, you'll likely only use it when you're visiting granny. Or someone else who doesn't have a dedicated charging station. But this two socket design didn't please automakers in Europe or the US. They felt it made charge port doors too large, ugly and cumbersome, and so the CCS standard was developed. It took the original low power charging inlets found on European and North American cars and added two larger pins immediately below, specifically for high voltage, high current, DC power transfer. The resulting charge socket was smaller, and the standard was defined to have a much higher initial power capability, meaning pretty much every automaker that wasn't in Japan started using it in preference to Chidemo. CCS cars have been around now for plenty of years, but Chidemo did have a last trick up its sleeve that CCS didn't. At least, it did initially. The ability to transfer power into and out of a vehicle. After the devastating tsunami and earthquake of March 2011, and spearheaded by TEPCO and other members of the Chidemo Alliance, which by that point also included Honda and Toyota, a significant effort was put into promoting the connector's capability to transfer power into or out of a vehicle. It meant that with a special vehicle-to-home charging station, owners could power their homes from their vehicles if the power went out. And to be fair, I think that killer feature did help extend Chidemo's life for many years. It's frankly something that Nissan, using Leafs and ENV200s to power everything from ice cream stands to a home and even a disco stage, has pushed hard at all of its EV press events. But to date, the number of people who've actually installed Chidemo vehicle-to-home infrastructure in their home is relatively small. At least it is outside of Japan. If you'll allow me though, I would like to disappear down a quick rat run here because in Japan, Chidemo charging stations are not only everywhere, 
but it's also the standard on pretty much every car. The Japanese BMW i3 had one, so does the Japanese market Jaguar I-Pace. The Toyota Prius Prime even has one, and the Energica range of electric motorcycles have Chidemo compatible charging when they're sold in Japan. And if you've ever looked at the official B-roll for the Toyota Mirai and Honda Clarity fuel cell sedans, and noticed that they have one, it's so that you can plug in a hydrogen fuel cell car into a vehicle-to-home system. The more you know. For DIY enthusiasts, Chidemo has proven pretty easy to work with, and we've seen plenty of DIY EVs with Chidemo added. But as CCS has been preferred and pushed by major automakers, and the charging networks those automakers have backed have grown in size, the number of CCS charging locations has dwarfed Chidemo ones. And more recently, two-way power transfer between an EV and a charging station has been demonstrated with other means, with high power demonstrations using CCS, and lower power demonstrations using two-way J1772. CCS, while harder to work with than Chidemo, because of its closed standard and encrypted protocol communications, has really caused headaches for DIY enthusiasts. But as those who've been following the EV DIY world and the work of the excellent Damien Maguire will know that CCS charging has now been cracked by the DIY community. Which leaves us where? In Japan, Chidemo is still dominant, and in China, where GB-T is mechanically different from it, but electronically compatible by means of a simple adapter, the standard is likely to live on for a really long time. Indeed, the latest version of Chidemo, the one I mentioned earlier in the video that does 400 kilowatts, combines the GB-T and Chidemo standards into one brand new connector that will serve EVs in Japan and China. But elsewhere, Chidemo charging stations are already being neglected as the overwhelming majority of EV owners opt for CCS cars. Heck, even Tesla uses CCS in Europe and countries that follow European charging standards like New Zealand and Australia. Although that is because Tesla was kind of forced to by European legislations, not because it wanted to. In the US, it still uses its own proprietary connector. Oh, and side note, if you want to learn how Tesla using CCS in Europe makes it super easy and barely an inconvenience for Tesla to open up its charging network to non-Teslas, just click here. Because Chidemo and CCS are not compatible, and because of communication protocols you can't just make a mechanical adapter to get them to play nice with each other, the likelihood of getting an affordable third-party adapter that goes between both standards is pretty slim. And while it's technically possible to build a charging adapter with onboard power electronics that could talk both communication protocols and provide some kind of bridging between them, I guess such a device would be expensive and bulky. But it won't be something that the majority of Nissan Leaf, Kia Soul EV or any Chidemo compatible car owner will want to carry around with them. Right now, it looks as if the majority of charging networks are not suddenly going to start pulling out Chidemo stations, but given that many networks, including Electrify America, are already just using one token charging station that's Chidemo compatible, the matter of redundancy and reliability is already rearing its ugly head. When we went to fully charge live in Texas last year, before COVID was the nightmare it is now, we were able to charge at every location we stopped at because we were in a CCS car and there was plenty of CCS redundancy at each place we stopped. A longtime friend of the show who drove there in his Kia Soul EV struggled. Finding more than once a broken Chidemo charging station meant he had to stop and change his plans. Ten years ago, when we were all trailblazing the EV life with our Nissan Leafs, Having redundancy failures was a common experience for everyone, and it came with being on the bleeding edge of early adoption. But now, that's simply not acceptable. The West Coast Electric Highway is another example. It was a beacon of early adopter goodness and had Chidemo compatible charging stations along the length of the I-5. Now plenty of those locations are offline due to equipment failure, and that's right, they are all single points of failure. Should you buy a Chidemo compatible car? The answer depends on where you live. Obviously, if you're in Japan, the answer is yes. 
And if you're in a major urban area where there are still a large number of Chidemo compatible charging stations and you either have another car for road tripping or don't road trip at all, then sure, be my guest. But if you're looking to buy a new long range Nissan Leaf and think it'll let you easily travel from one side of the US to the other, or fancy taking one from the UK all the way to the south of France, well, I would strongly advise you don't. Aside from the lack of redundancy at most charging locations, because charging providers were forced to install one Chademo for many years and have done just the bare minimum, it doesn't make sense spending money on a car which uses a charging standard that is now viewed as obsolete. And with plenty of CCS cars now coming to market with some form of vehicle to X two-way power transfer, the benefit of having Chademo for backup power is no longer its USP. If you're willing to be the second class EV citizen and to find long distance trips a struggle, go right ahead. But if I was investing in a new car right now, I know which connector I'd want on it. That's it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.